Hey everyone, I'm Carlo LaRosso from Secrets of Home Theater in High Fidelity. And today what we have for you is a review of the pretty impressive NAD Master Series M33 Blue Off Streaming Integrated Amplifier. So we're all familiar with integrated amplifiers. And lately there have been a number of companies who've brought very complete, well put together uh, integrated amplifiers that have scads of power, lots of resources for phono uh, inputs, also digital inputs as well. And some of them even have streaming capabilities that allow access to your music that you may have uh, on your computer, on your hard drive, on a network attached drive, or to if you subscribe to uh, a service like Spotify or Tidal or Cobuzz. What NAD has brought to us with the, the M33, in my estimation, is probably the most complete and I would say well put together combination of hardware and user experience that I think I've come across in an almost all-in-one like this. So in order to keep this review concise and moving along fairly well is that I've broken down the M33's capabilities into about three to four main sections. Uh, first is its streaming capabilities. Uh, next would be the availability of Dirac on board. And the third one would be the Purify Eigentact, I hope I said that right, amplification uh, system that uh, it features. Um, we'll also talk about uh, the nice little add-ons like the phono stage and the headphone amplifier as well and the accessories. And then I will give you at the end kind of my overall impressions of uh, this pretty impressive and um, well put together piece of equipment. So let's get to it. And so here the main feature on the uh, face of the uh, NAD M33 is the really gorgeous 7-inch color display. And it's obviously a touch display, so you can use it to access all the main features. So here we go. If we touch on it, it's currently in the Blue OS input, and you can change inputs according to how you'd like, just by touch. There you go. And uh, one interesting thing is, wait for the close out of that. And you can see for the line in, uh, and it also does this for the photo stage, you get VU meters. Look at that. Isn't that cool? You can configure the inputs to uh, display various things, and one of them, uh, when they're in use, is VU meters. you got to dig that. Anyway, back over here. Uh, so obviously there's your there's your input selection there and go back to blue boss here we have uh, your um, place for uh, your different presets that you want to have and here obviously in the settings uh, category you can configure settings for a bunch of different uh, a bunch of different things here um, so the player itself you have all these options here to choose from uh, you can set up the indiv um, uh, individual details for all your sources and accessing your, well, your music library if you have a music library hooked up to it, other things, upgrade and all that good stuff and of course you have your system information and how it's all hooked up to the network and all that good stuff. So there we go.
So now let's take a look at the back panel of the NAD M33 and uh, as you can see in just the overview shot here it's got uh, a plethora of inputs for you to hook up uh, various pieces of equipment to. We'll just kind of zoom in a little beer, a little beer, a little here <laughs> and uh, one track mine and um, we will uh, go through some of these inputs and other features that it has. So here are the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas for both types of wireless communication. We have a couple of coaxial digital inputs, a couple of optical digital inputs, an AES EBU digital input there. Uh, there's your local area network, which I use to connect the NADM33 to my home network and router and then it can stream and access all my music that's on the network that way. There's an HDMI audio uh, input with audio return channels for you to hook up a TV and get and get audio from your TV that way. There are a pair of subwoofer outputs uh, going down here. There are a pair of balanced um, audio inputs there. We have a dedicated phono input which will accept both moving magnet and moving coil uh, cartridges via a selection on the front panel. Um, you have a regular analog line input and you have a unbalanced pair of uh, preamp output jacks. If I'm going to nitpick, I do wish the M33 did have a pair of balanced pre-out jacks, but the back panel is pretty crowded and you can't always have everything. Interesting thing over here is the bridge switch. So you can, in fact, bridge the amplifier uh, amplifiers in the M33 to a single mono channel. If you bridge it to mono, you'll get something along the area of 600 odd watts into an 8 ohm load. So a, you can bridge it into a single 600 watt mono amplifier channel that uh, they recommend only hooking up an 8 ohm or higher load to. So you can do that, which is interesting. You have your RS-232 uh, for automation and stuff like that. Uh, your trigger inputs and outputs. And here are the speaker jacks. Up to two pairs of speakers here. Uh, so the M33, if you have a single pair of speakers, it'll take 8 ohm and 4 ohm speakers without a problem. Uh, if you're going to hook up two pairs of speakers, NAD recommends that the total impedance of both pairs of speakers does not get any lower than 8 ohms. So 8 ohm and above if you hook up two pairs of speakers to the M33. Um, one thing I did want to mention, oh, I forgot to mention over here, is this USB input. If you have a, a hard drive uh, full of uh, digital audio, you can uh, hook it up to there, and the M33 and Blue OS will index all your audio and make it available for you so you can access it. So either a thumb drive or a hard drive full of music can be hooked up there. Interesting thing here is, in case for those of you who aren't familiar, these MDC slots. The M33 has two of them. And what they are are um, modular expansion slots. So NAD offers um, these um, optional add-on cards that you can install into um, various uh, NAD products. So the M33 has uh, two slots and you can hook up, um, there's I think a uh, two or three cards that you can hook, you can choose from to hook up in here. There is a uh, asynchronous USB card that you can hook up here because uh, if you'll notice, there there isn't a asynchronous USB input for for hooking up, um, say for example, your computer or, or a uh, separate streamer or something too. There's also a uh, an HDMI card that you can hook up that'll give you, I believe, up to four HDMI uh, inputs you can add to the M33. So there you have it. That's the, nut, in a nutshell, the array of inputs and outputs. And oh, almost forgot the grounding lug for the phono. There you go. So one thing I want to mention is that every good uh, audio component comes with a remote control. This is the remote control that comes with the M33. It is a beast. It looks like it is hewn from a billet of aluminum. It, this thing, if you get mad at someone and you pitch it at them, it will hurt. 
<laughs> I mean, you could give someone a concussion with this thing if you're not careful. Um, but it is a learning remote, and it controls obviously the M all the features of the M33, uh, the, all the main features. But it could also be taught uh, features for other components as well. Um, as beastly and impressive as this remote is, um, <laughs> I ended up not using it all that much with the uh, with the M33 because of the. Uh, you can control everything with the Blue OS uh, app through your phone or your tablet, uh, which you will see shortly. So here's the uh, Blue OS streaming app that is available for either iOS or Android. Uh, I have it here installed on uh, on one of my iPads, and with this, you can see that it is indeed connected already to the M33, which is on the network. It's connected to a home network via an ethernet cable, so it is there and in contact. You, using the Blue OS app, you can pretty much control all the functions of the, uh, of the M33, pretty much negating the need for the remote control, that fabulous remote control that they provided. Here you can see on this, menu, on this navigation bar, you can access any one of the inputs both analog and digital. You can also access streaming services that you've or that you have subscriptions for that you're signed into. Right now I got Cobas, Radio Paradise, Tidal. Um, if you want to see the different music services that you have access to, here we go. Blue OS can uh, work with all these different streaming services, Amazon, you know, Deezer, Idagio, Nugs.net. Uh, Neil Young Archives, Cobuzz, Tidal, which you already know, Sirius XM Radio is a new addition, Spotify. Um, so if you have a subscription or an account with any of these services, you can log in and pretty much use Blue OS to uh, get to your music through any of those services. Let's see, going down here in the settings menu, you can access the player itself, and it gives you the basics right there of the uh, display at, uh, at the beginning and then if you could click audio here's where you have the direct controls for M33 functions itself. Uh, here there are different, you can access the different direct presets that you ha may have saved in the M33 so I can switch between any of the presets that I have at will. Um, there's set up for tone controls if you want to have tone controls. Um, there's provisions for up to two subwoofers that you can connect to the M33 and you can adjust the crossover and the selection of one or two subwoofers from here. Replay gain to uh, make sure all your digital music plays back the same volume and a bunch of other different things you can select for the function of your player. There we go. So um, yeah, it's pretty comprehensive and right now here you can see if you want to access yep go over here the volume volume come here volume there you go here you can adjust the volume of the unit via the slider or sort of incrementally with these plus and minus controls down you go there we are so yeah pretty pretty comprehensive what this app can do and with it you can uh, uh, connect to other Blue OS nodes that you may have in the house and stream content from your M33 to those nodes uh, or control those nodes directly through uh, through the app by uh, selecting the, the, the player you want to access. So it's a really, really elegant and pretty sweetly working um, uh, interface and uh, they update it regularly. It just got updated again this morning. So it's 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 quite something and it's great that they can integrate it into uh, such a really appealing looking and sounding piece of equipment. Now here what you see is the computer screen interface for Dirac uh, room correction which comes bundled with the NAD M33. Once the program boots up you are presented with a screen that asks you to select the measurement microphone that you want to use. Now the NAD comes bundled with a small silver puck uh, shaped microphone that you can use. I like to use a, a different microphone that I have. It's a, a calibrated mini DSP UMIC-1 microphone and Dirac uh, recognizes it and uh, has a correction curve for it and so that I can load in and it works with it just fine. So if we go into the 
the uh, software here and we select the microphone and then we proceed to the volume calibration. This is a step where the, the system plays test tones and you raise and lower the output level and mic gain to get the appropriate level for a successful measurement. We'll just skip that right now and go to the arrangement. And so when you do a, a room measurement with Dirac, uh, it gives you a few options in terms of what your listening position is like. Here it shows what a focused imaging result that Dirac spells out, and it involves 13 measurements if you have, say, a love seat sort of arrangement. So, so you would take 13 measurements that will spell out for you. There's a wide imaging choice where if it's like more than you in the center position, if it's like a couple of people, and that's 17 measurements that it would ask you to do. For my listening position, I use the tightly focused, which was just me, special old me, uh, in my listening position, and that asks for nine measurements for Dirac to use to uh, generate its uh, room correction file. So if we proceed to measurement, you can see here where Dirac asks you to speak to place the microphone. First it would ask you to place it at uh, pretty much ear level at the main listening position and then there are four other positions that it asks you to place the microphone in succession above that first measurement point and then four more below. So for a total of nine measurements. Now this is a uh, measurement result that I already took with, uh, with Dirac and here you can see this purple line here is the result of the left speaker um, from the nine, average from the nine measurements and then if you click that uh, it'll give you the uh, this green trace which is the average of the right speaker in nine measurements so once it has that then it will generate what it considers a um, appropriate correction curve based on those measurements and that's what this gold this uh, yellow gold line here is and it gives you a uh, a correction for pretty much the usable bandwidth of the speaker here's the 20 kilohertz high range to speaker starts to roll off at like about 29 28 hertz so the low range is over here so as you can see after about 500 hertz it starts to you know, generally raise the bass even more before it hits the natural roll off of the speaker and goes down. So, one thing, and you can adjust the correction window of Dirac here. So, if you don't want to do a full 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz correction, you can close the window here and, and indicate how much you want Dirac to manipulate the correction of the speaker. So for my uh, measurement I basically reduced the correction amount from 400 Hertz maximum on down. So basically correct the bass and upper bass and and just a bit of the lower mid-range uh, of the speaker because that's where the room tends to dominate what the uh, the speaker sounds like more than the uh, than uh, than beyond that. So one thing I should mention though is Dirac Live that is bundled with the M33 has a limit of from 20 to 500 hertz correction that it will let you do out of the box. If you want to do a full bandwidth 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz correction you will need to purchase an additional uh, license to unlock that feature of the Dirac software, and that's $99, which you can do after you uh, after you register and you purchase and register the M33. So that is what Dirac essentially does with these speakers in this room. You can manipulate these points obviously as much as you want. Well, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say as much as you want. You should do it within reason. You have to be really careful how much boost you dial in. Because um, uh, if you're a little too crazy, you could. it's not uh, unreasonable to say that you could damage your speakers if you decide to do something really silly like that. <laughs> um, you really don't want to do that because that just is just silly and it cause all kinds of distortion and overwork your speaker and and not be nice so you can like I said you can manipulate this this correction curve and store five different 
types of uh, corrections that you want. Some you might want to add a little more boost. You might want to try adding a little more bass boost for, um, you know, say if you're watching movies or something like that. You may want to do some other tweaks. Uh, whatever, you, whatever you'd like, you can save up to five different presets. So, and the uh, Blue Oss software will allow you to switch in between any of those presets while you're listening to the M33. So now let's take a look at the inside of the NAD M33. And here we have a top view with the uh, top lid removed. And you can see it's a pretty clean and well laid out interior. Now we're going to take you in and focus on one of the uh, highlights of the M33's design, and that is the use of the two Purify Audio Agentact amplifier modules. As you can see here, now it's kind of hard to get into look at the nitty gritty of everything as there's like a little bit of a shield or covering above them, but uh, these amplifiers, these amplifier modules, were designed by uh, Bruno Putzes of Purify Audio, and their main claim to fame is extremely low distortion and uh, relatively significant power output. They're a Class D design, but they're uh, Bruno's take and refinement of the Class D design, uh, particularly to get those notable uh, low distortion uh, numbers and out uh, in the output. NAD uh, licensed the technology from Purify Audio, so NAD actually builds these modules themselves. They don't buy them from Purify themselves, so uh, the technology is licensed and NAD builds their amplifier modules uh, on their own. So here's where we get down to the nitty gritty and I wanted to give you what my impressions are of the M33. I think what NAD has done here is they've really given us something that just kind of hits it out of the park in terms of what a integrated amplifier in 2021 should be. I mean, w what they've put together here is something that takes a lot of disparate elements and puts it all together in a cohesive and easy to use package um, that you don't have to be a seasoned audiophile to take advantage of. Anybody could uh, could use the uh, the M33 and get a fantastic and repeatable user experience out of it. It's really, really well put together and um, from uh, both an industrial design standpoint, I mean look at it, it's gorgeous looking, but from a usability standpoint it's it's really a joy to use. The Blue OS operating platform, um, I used it on my tablet, on, I have an iPad and an, on my iPhone, and it just works beautifully. Uh, very elegant, streamlined, the interface is snappy, and there's a ton of options for uh, accessing both my library and streaming services and other things that I uh, that were available online that I hadn't even thought of. So it's really, really well put together. It, M33 can also, through the Blue Boss platform, act as a, um, a hub for uh, streaming music to other parts of your house if you have other Blue Boss endpoints at, uh, say, in your kitchen or in the bedroom or in the guest room. The ecosystem uh, that Blue Boss brings to the M33 is really tightly put together and uh, very user-friendly. So that that's a huge deal right there. Combine that with the availability of Dirac if you uh, you have room issues and you want to correct say the bass how the bass sounds of your speakers uh, because your room you know isn't overly friendly to them uh, you can do that. The uh, Purify amp technology that is available the M33 there's been a lot of talk out there about uh, the Purify amplifiers and uh, how they how good they sound how good their performance is how low the distortion is listening to my revels and some other speakers through the m33 i can confirm that those uh the amplifier section is really clean it sounds it sounds as clean as pretty much anything i've ever heard i mean i have uh, a benchmark uh, ah 
B2 amplifier that I use as my reference. The Purify amplifiers on the M33 sound, you know, pretty much as good as far as I can tell. I don't think I could, uh, I could lock down any, you know, major, minor, um, detailed differences of just the amplifier alone because Dirac makes a, a huge difference in the sound if you if you elect to use that. In a nutshell I can say that uh, the Purify amplifiers on the M33 I think are probably about as good as you're going to as you're going to encounter uh, in a product at this uh, at this category and they're plenty powerful I mean they drove my Revels. The, the Revels are in reality they're about a four ohm speaker through much of their operating range and the Purify amps just uh, you know had no problem running them and uh, to their to their fullest potential so I couldn't see uh, someone not being pleased with the amplification that's on the M33. So another question I'm sure some people would ask is like well how does the phono stage sound on the M33? What's the quality of the phono reproduction since the phono stage is obviously uh, digitized. It's not a straight through analog uh, signal chain. Uh, the RIAA equalization is done in the analog domain once the turntable signal comes in and then it's converted to digital for uh, processing and everything else that uh, has to be done before, before it's finally amplified. I, I think a lot of folks might get hung up on the idea that a phono section is not a purely analog signal or purely analog path going straight through the M33. And to them, I think I would say they need to kind of get over that. This, this component does so much stuff and the benefits of converting uh, the phono signal from analog to digital, in my mind, far outweigh any sort of quaint concept of your LPs remaining analog from start to finish. The fact that you can use Dirac uh, to help your uh, LP sound uh, as good as they can in your room is a huge thing. Also, say someone wants to uh, hear their favorite record, but they're not where the M33 is. They're say in the um, you know in the living room upstairs, and you have a, a Blue OS endpoint up there. And if I wanted to, I could put an LP on down here and I could send the output up to my living room so say my wife could hear her favorite album up there. That is something else. That's a, that's a benefit of having the signal converted to digital. As a straight sonic impression um, of, what the, of what my uh, records sound like just played normally through the M33, they sound great. I mean, they sound about as as good as I've heard them on uh, my uh, my analog setup. So um, I don't think there's really any sort of downside. NAD also didn't scrimp on the headphone uh, amplifier section uh, on the M33. It sounds uh, to my ears a lot a lot better than what I was expecting. I don't really have really hard to drive headphones, but um, I hooked up my uh, my Hi-Fi Man HE 1000 V2s. I have a pair of uh, Dan Clark Audio Aeon 2 Noirs here that uh, I hooked up to it, and I also hooked up my uh, my Bayer Dynamic uh, DT 880 Pro that are 250 ohm, and uh, the NAD M33 seemed to power them all just fine. If I was going to have any sort of critique on the sound from the headphone amplifier section, I would say there's probably a little light on the bass if you compare it to say a standalone headphone amplifier, where that's all it does. So yeah, maybe the bass was probably a little on the light side, but otherwise uh, it was, it, the M33 has a very, very competent headphone section and you know, one should not be afraid to use it. So at the end of the day for the US MSRP of 5000 minus a dollar, uh, you get what I would consider probably one of the, one of the most complete all-in-one integrated amplifiers that you can get on the market today. It is essentially a complete source and amplifier all-in-one. You just basically got to add speakers. I think for the money, NAD gives you a heck of a lot and it's user-friendly. You don't have to be an audio nerd to figure this thing out and get the most out of it. 
So I think it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty sweet piece of equipment and uh, a bit of a uh, feather in the cap for NAD as far as I'm concerned. And one thing I wanted to mention is if you happen to come across this video review on the Secrets website, you'll also see that there's a smaller written portion where we do some bench tests on the, uh, the M33. If you happen to come across this review on our YouTube channel, if you like what you see, please go ahead and like it and subscribe to uh, the Secrets YouTube channel and you will get alerted when we have uh, new content that gets put up there. So, um, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks again for watching, and uh, hope to see you again soon. Take care and all the best.